there isn't actually a moment in my life uh, that I can remember having perfect hearing. Uh, most doctors that I've spoken with uh, believe that it was caused by rubella when I was uh, one years old. And um, so pretty much I you know, had uh, hearing deficiency as long as I can remember. I didn't actually really start noticing it until I was um, probably about five or six years old. And I, I can remember telling other kids on the playground uh, that, you know, I can't hear whispers. I can't hear secrets. You know, so kids would come up and, you know, try and tell me a secret, and I couldn't, I couldn't hear it. I was the kid who couldn't hear secrets. Uh, for some reason, my, uh, my family and, and the teachers didn't notice that I, you know, that this um, was a problem for me uh, until I was about seven, put me through a hearing screening, uh, found out I, I had lost about 60% in both ears, and uh, we had no idea why, but they made the decision, you know, let's try out a hearing aid. Wore that for a number of years and then, you know, entered my teenage years and, and uh, you know, went through a succession of hearing aids. Every two to four years, it was, you know, a new hearing aid, especially, you know, for kids, they're replacing the hearing aids on a regular basis. So uh, by the time I got to, to high school, I was on my fourth or fifth iteration of, a, of an aid. The procedure itself, uh, I remember quite vividly. It was... Um, I uh, was with Dr. Shohet, who really inspired a lot of confidence in me that the procedure was going to go well and that I would be well taken care of and that he was very qualified and uh, that he knew what he was doing and that the recovery would be very smooth. So uh, I remember checking in and being very well taken care of and provided for. Uh, I don't remember any pain associated with the procedure whatsoever. So I uh, got home, spent a day in bed. Uh, the next day, I was, was up on my feet, and a uh, day and a half later, I was on a plane across the country attending a four-day conference in uh, Washington, D.C. Having the esteem has really enhanced the quality of my life, in particular, the quality of my relationships. Uh, I think about my interaction with my family. I have a wonderful wife of, I've known for almost 20 years, and I have uh, two young boys, a uh, five-year-old and a two-year-old. And uh, the esteem has not only allowed me to be uh, more pragmatic in my daily interactions. For instance, I can hear when I'm sleeping. So, you know, if my uh, wife is out of town and uh, when the boys were young, I didn't have to worry about if one of them's crying in the middle of the night, you know, I could get up and attend to them. Uh, if I want to take my boys to the ocean, you know, go surfing, uh, I can do that. I don't have to be concerned that one of them is going to go under and start screaming for me and I can't hear them because I had to take my aids out before we went to the ocean. Another area where uh, the quality of my relationships has really improved is in the area of the workplace. Uh, my business relationships are uh, built on my ability to be confident in my communications uh, with the people that I have to work with, uh, including customers, associates, uh, executives, Everything in that interaction is built on trust. So when you speak to these customers, when you speak to these individuals, you have to represent a position of trust, that they can trust you, that you can trust them, that you're bringing credibility. And if they don't perceive that you're listening to them, even if you're trying to listen to them, if they don't perceive that you're hearing what they're saying, they're not gonna trust you. And I was able to, uh, as sales director in my region for that uh, year period of time, was actually able to grow our territorial revenue by 20% quarter over quarter, which indicated to me uh, that my customers trusted me. The esteem in many ways has given me the ability to always be confident. Uh, I'm an amateur triathlete. Uh, I've done, um, I don't know, something like maybe 10 to 15 uh, triathlons over the years and, and other various events, you know, half marathons and 10Ks and 5Ks. It is very difficult to jump into an ocean with 5,000 other people and swim a mile and not be able to hear. I'm a pretty active person. That I do a lot of different activities that involve uh, physical exertion. There is no noise more annoying than the sound of coming down a hill 30 miles an hour on a bike with a hearing aid in your ear. It sounds like a jet plane is flying by and 
the steam. You don't get that. There is no, there's no wind noise. Uh, there's also a huge safety factor there for me. So I would choose to go riding, you know, before the esteem. Wouldn't have the uh, aids in my ear. So here I am hearing at 40%, uh, normal hearing. I can't hear if there's a fire engine coming up behind me. I can't hear if somebody's honking at me. So now with the esteem, I know if I go out riding, uh, and my family knows if I go out riding, that I'm going to be safe. And uh, that's, that's critical to me.